the shadows on the bedroom wall Silhouettes of memories that I can't recall Trying to be ready for the car Trying not to fall Ready for the landfall Rolling way too slow to win this human race Gotta travel light through this desirable maze The miles I leave in traces on my face Signs of falling grace Filling up the empty space My friends, welcome to the Lone Wolf Cabin. I am dying to know, folks, what do you all think? I cannot believe how good the airflow is inside of this. When we had this built, the one thing that we really wanted, one thing that was really important was airflow. So we have a ton of windows. One, two, three, four, five. We also have a vent in the top. We have barn doors at the back. We have the door over here. The temperature today outside is 82. But in here, because it's insulated and also because it's so airy, it's quite the difference. It's incredibly comfortable. With the insulation, it's blocking the radiant heat from the sun from coming through, and it makes a huge difference. Before I show you around inside, let's go outside and let's talk about this for a second. This is a toy hauler. It is a seven by 17 foot toy hauler. You have the steel frame, the heavy duty aluminum siding. It's insulated, also finished on the inside. For the most part, I'll show you more about that in just a moment. The weight of this is 3,600 pounds. Dual axle, both heavy duty. It's been lifted about four inches. You can see I have the ladder right there. There's a roof rack on top. That's for storage or solar panels or even a deck in the future if that's what we want to do. As I mentioned before, we have two doors on this. We have this door here and we have the double doors in the back, the barn doors. Going back to the inside of the cabin here, that's what I'm going to call it from here on out. It is a trailer, it's a toy hauler, but I'm going to call it the cabin. On the inside, you can see that it's been partially finished. And what I mean by that is this. We have this upper row of cabinets, lower row of cabinets. It features a stainless steel top. We have the walls, the floors, the ceiling, all that's been finished out and also insulated. It is 100% off grid. There's no power outlets, nothing like that. All of those needs will be addressed with power stations that we have inside, that we bring inside. So far, we really haven't done much. You can see that we prepared the area around the trailer and underneath it. On the inside, we have a few tables and that's pretty much it. There is like a small little drawer system over there with nothing in it. As of right now, this is very bare bones and that's what this trip is all about. It's a first run. There's no bed in here, no couch, nothing like that. I will take care of that in the future or I should say Susie and I will, but heck, I'm so excited about this that I wanted to come out, show it to you all and we'll spend a night in it. As a reminder, everyone, a merch store has been set up. So if you're interested in some outdoor gear review merch, you can find the link down below. Thank you all so much for the support. It means a lot. I need to check the weather real quick because on the way out here, I received a notification that said that there's a severe thunderstorm watch for this area. That's interesting considering the fact today was supposed to be beautiful. Severe thunderstorm watch in effect until 5 p.m. It is now two.
The sun is out. It's raining outside. It's incredibly humid, but luckily we have airflow. And also there's a, a nice echo in here. There we go. I've spoken about the importance of airflow in previous adventures. You can camp out in temperatures over 100 degrees as long as you have airflow. If you have that, you can stay cool, you can stay comfortable. This fan is making a world of difference inside of here. My friends, cheers to you all. As you all can hear, it's raining rather nicely. We are now under a severe thunderstorm warning. It says here, impact, hail damage to vehicles is expected. Wind damage to roofs, sidings, trees. Winds, 60 miles an hour, quarter size hail. It's raining away. I have some coffee here inside of the cabin. This is really working out well. The first thing that I need to do though, is fill it with stuff because I can't stand the echo. It's a little much. All in all, I'm very impressed. I, I'm really happy with this. If you didn't see my previous episodes about the cabin, the, the main reason, the main point of this is for gear testing. Secondary is to enjoy it, but primarily it's for gear testing. Here at Lone Wolf Mountain, this is 50 miles away from where I live. As I've begun testing out more and more tents in more extreme conditions to see what their limits are, I discovered real quick I needed to have something here so that when I was testing out a product and it failed, I could have some safety. If you go back to like last year and the year before testing out tents in the fall into the winter, I would have these issues where the tents would leak, I would be inside of them, I'd be getting wet. I'm testing out the tents not only for waterproofness, but like condensation, moisture control, and so on. Well, I would get soaking wet, which is incredibly dangerous. With this cabin, that allows me to test those products in a safer environment. And also, it means that I don't have to drive home in the middle of the night after a product fails. Sometimes I would set up around 8 o'clock, get into the tent, 
it would begin raining around 12, I would discover that the product leaks, then I would have to drive an hour to home. For safety's sake alone, this is going to pay off dividends big time for not only me, but also for the channel. Later on tonight with dinner, I'll talk about getting this trailer up here. That was interesting. That is only the uh, second time I've ever towed anything in my entire life. So um, that was quite the trip. Plus, getting it up here, that's not easy. Getting anything up here is not easy. Here in a little bit, we'll talk about that. But for now, I'm going to enjoy my coffee and enjoy this storm. This is like a uh, trial by fire sort of trip. I mean, it is just flat out pouring. Some of those wind gusts are like 50 miles an hour. Scary, almost, actually. Oh, I just got a text message from Susie. She says, major storm at home. High winds, but everything's okay. That's crazy. The forecast today was like, a 20% chance of rain. The entire area is under a severe thunderstorm warning right now. I would say by dark, this is going to be over. And if that's the case, we may have a fire. We'll see. Everything's really, really wet though. I did not expect it to rain this long. It has been raining for about three hours straight. It's only five o'clock in the afternoon, but it is dark outside. It is very, very dark. It looks like it's like eight o'clock out there. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and cook dinner. That way, by the time I have everything wrapped up, it'll be dark and we'll get a fire going.
What I have here for dinner is going to be awesome. I have made pineapple ginger teriyaki cheesy sandwiches. It looks incredible and smells unbelievable. Dinner is done by six o'clock. It's not too bad. So let's give this a shot, everyone. We'll try the chicken all by itself. Let's hope it's good. Mm-hmm. That is freaking awesome. I'm pretty sure I say that all the time, right? Mm. Especially on that toasted bun. That is awesome. There's almost like a barbecue element to this. What is also awesome is the conditions. Right now, it's about 70 degrees. It feels really, really good. Talking about this trailer for a second, this came from Colorado Trailers. We purchased it from them. They had it manufactured down in Texas. And then from Texas, we had it shipped here. All in all, it has taken about six months to get this. The waiting list is huge. These things are super popular. People oftentimes will convert them like we've done and they will camp in them as well as keeping their gear inside of them. The benefits of going this route are many. First off, we can move it. We can move it anytime that we want to. That means many things. If we decide to take this on an adventure, we can. We could take it, we can camp in it. Think of it as like an upgraded, stronger, heavy duty RV. Again, folks, this thing weighs 3,600 pounds. Dual axle, each one rated for over 5,000 pounds. It has a four inch lift on it. Towing this thing over here was an adventure. I have to be honest, I'm not the world's best tower. I've mentioned this before, I've towed twice in my life. The first time I towed a car from Oregon all the way here to North Carolina, that went really well, but that was like, I don't know, <laughs> 12 years ago, maybe? The individual who brought it to us was a woman. She was incredibly sweet. Her name's Stella. Stella, thank you so much. She started this business of like delivering things two months ago. And she said that she's been all over the country. She even gave us some pointers on how to like hook up the trailer, towing it and so on. I really appreciated that, big time. The adventure of towing that thing up here, out here, was interesting. So first off, with my truck, the previous owner, he must have towed quite a bit. The truck is equipped with air ride suspension, so like, uh, no matter how much weight you have in the back, the truck will not squat. Also, the truck has a brake controller, in addition to a compressor. What's kind of funny is that I know absolutely nothing about a brake controller, so it is how it is, or I should say it was how it was. So we hit the road. The first thing that I notice is like the brakes, they are super, super sensitive. If I even put moderate pressure on the brake, the truck would come to a stop. I didn't notice that the trailer's brakes were locking up, but that is what was taking place. So we hit the road, maybe 40 minutes later, there's quite a bit of traffic behind me. I find a pull off, I take it, and one of the vehicles behind me, he pulls off too. And he lets me know that every time I touch the brakes, the brakes on the trailer are locking up. I didn't notice this while driving, but I appreciate that information. So I look at the brake controller and I can see that every time I hit the brake, it says five, five, five point five. I'm not sure. There's a little dial on there. I cranked it down to two and that solved all of the problems. With Lone Wolf Mountain, the driveway is half a mile long, and at the beginning, it is incredibly steep. I mean, folks, I mean, it's like this. I open up the gate, carefully go through, I hit the gas, and we start climbing this mountain. So we're going up, and it turns super sharp, and then goes straight up, just flying up this mountain. Truck did great. I love that V8 power. More than anything, I love the V8 sound. You can't replicate it anyways. We make it halfway up the mountain. We know by then that everything is going to be fine. So we make it up the mountain here, come out here into this opening. I bring it over and I'm trying to get this trailer on this pad. I'll be honest. I did the equivalent of like a 40 point turn. It was, <laughs> it's like this, turn, this, turn, you know, back and forth, back and forth. I'm not really accustomed to backing up with a trailer. That is an art. It takes some time to get it. It's one of those things where you have to turn the opposite direction of what you think you would have to. In the end, we got it here. It's all settled and it's been here for about a week. It was quite the adventure, my friends, quite the adventure. As far as security goes, this thing is set. No one's going to be able to take it. First off, they would have to get through the gate. Then there's two tire locks, wheel locks. There's a trailer hitch lock and something else. I can't remember what they called it, but there's another lock. It's not impossible, but it's highly unlikely.
My friends, cheers. It's a good way to end the evening. Sitting around a nice fire, having a beer, listening to the night. The sunset this evening was incredible. I love those. Right after a storm, they're always the best. And that one did not fail to impress. Talking a bit more about the cabin there. By the way, we need a nickname for it. <laughs> if you have a good nickname, comment down below or shoot me an email. I appreciate it. I haven't spent enough time with it yet to really have a good name, but I'm sure we will come up with something. Those trailers are not very expensive. Or I should say this, they weren't six months ago when we locked in our price. Because of inflation and how bad the economy is, <laughs> folks, it has gotten so bad it's unbelievable. It only took two years, and uh, well, there you go. With building materials being so expensive, this was a really budget-friendly way to go. And something like this, man, I mean, you can use this for all sorts of purposes, something like this. Comparing the toy hauler to like an RV, there's a substantial difference in quality. RVs, for the most part, man, the quality on those things are just so-so, but yet their prices are super high. We wanted something more substantial that could handle the elements here at Lone Wolf Mountain. And ultimately, that's what we decided upon. I cannot wait for this winter, folks. Got the heater buddy going in there. It's snowing. Looking out the window, the landscape's white. It's just you and I. It sounds good, don't it? it? Sounds really good. As you can see, I have thought about this for a while now. You might be able to see it behind me. The fireflies are out and there are millions of them here. This area is known as the firefly capital of the world. Now, that sounds impressive, but it's not because numerous places claim that. We're just one of many. Just in case you're wondering, with fireflies, they're a type of beetle and there's like a thousand different types of these things depending on region. When they light up, that is part of the mating process. That's how they attract their mates. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's official. I'm a bum. I slept in. It's uh, about 8.30. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. I had plans to get up early and watch the sunrise, but that did not work out. I guess I was just sleeping good. Let me tell you, everybody. It is so cool, so comfortable feels incredible. As for last night, slept great, very comfortable on the floor. Also, uh, this quilt did a good job. This is the uh, one tigress quilt. Man, I like this quite a bit. As far as the first night in the cabin, it really went well last night. Very comfortable. This is going to be super, super nice. Ah. Cheers, everyone, cheers. For the last week, it's been hot here. We've been under a heat wave. So by like nine o'clock in the morning, 80 degrees. It'd be that hot. What a difference. Oh man, perfect. As for last night, very quiet, very peaceful. Didn't really hear anything at all. I went to bed around, I don't know, 11. And for some reason slept in super late, oops. As far as the cabin trailer thing goes, I really like this, guys. I really do. I think this is going to be so nice. Not only to get away from it all, but for testing purposes here at Lone Wolf Mountain. There's quite a bit of work to be done here, though. As it stands right now, bare bones, 
no lighting, no seating. We need to finish hooking up the table, get the water going. I had to order some parts for the setup and that should be coming soon. That way we could actually use the sink, the faucet, and all that stuff. So we have cheesy eggs, some bacon, some coffee, my friends, an incredible view, a beautiful day. It doesn't get much better than this. Mm-hmm. After breakfast, I have some work that I need to do. I have a new tent that I'm testing out, so I need to set it up, see how easy it is to pitch it. It's a uh, tent from Alps Mountaineering a teepee tent. It looks interesting. The price wasn't all that bad, but here's the thing. The reviews for this thing online are awful. They're not good. Talking about gear for a second, it was brought to my attention the other day that Coleman has a brand new line of tents. They are expensive, like really expensive. I'll go through the list here. They have a one person tent for 230. They have a two person tent, 270. They have a three person tent, $300. Then there's the four person, $440. Then they have the six person, $550. All right. Breakfast was amazing, folks, and this was a good trip. Thank you all so much for joining me for this very quick first run here in the cabin. Make sure to hit the thumbs up before you go because it does help the channel. You can support The Outdoor Gear Review, Patreon, YouTube. You can join the Wolf Pack. The Outdoor Gear Review is fully supported by you and no one else. No sponsorships, no product placements, none of that BS. The channel is agenda-free and always will be. With that, I'm done. I will see you on Sunday and Tuesday with the reviews and next Thursday with the next adventure. Bye for now. Strength and honor.
缺乏。